My brothers and sisters, we return to the book of Psalm chapter 30 for those who are here. And for those who weren't here, our text this morning comes to us from Psalm chapter 30. Our brother read it earlier. The verse 5, for his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. One of the things in, in Jamaica when you read a passage of scripture like this, especially verse 5, most persons are looking out. Either somebody is dead or it's a funeral sermon. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. And so many songs and scriptures, we have just attached them to funerals. So when you choose to sing them or deliberate on them on a Sunday morning, some person's wondering, I wonder what pastor dreams in now. <laughs> I wonder what pastor seen in the spirit coming now. Wonder who is going to die. Amen. But all scriptures are given for edification. And the uplifting of the souls of man. And so we return to Psalm chapter 30. I told you this morning that it was written by the eighth and youngest son of Jesse. And this man was from a kingly tribe of Judah. And that he was the direct descendant of Ruth the Moabite. He began as a shepherd in Bethlehem. Amen. Amen. He was an anointed king, or he was anointed to be king after the rejection of King Saul. He was a man after God's own heart. He was a musician, played his harp well, knew, knew the chords, yes. He was a poet. He was one, the one who broke the Philistines' power by uh, bringing down... Goliath, the Philistines giant. He was the greatest king ever ruled over a united Israel. Amen. And so the topic that we focus on this morning is disabled but not disqualified. Disabled but not disqualified. The word disabled means to have a physical or mental condition that limits movements, senses, or activities. It is at this time that a person sometimes thinks about all that he or she went through during such period when it initially took place or even what led to its occurrence. My brothers and sisters, disabilities can sometimes lead us to disqualification. Amen? Amen. Being disabled can sometimes lead to disqualification from future positions or opportunities. Disabled, being disabled, being limited, unable to move independently. That is when one becomes no longer approved according to what I would want to say human standard or view of point. My brothers and sisters, in the passage read and verse 5 to be exact, I want us to look at the word weeping, which represents night or darkness. Night or darkness represents weeping, and it goes in the reverse. It says weeping may endure, and we have got to look at the word may. The writer David was deliberate in his writing when he says may. It may endure for a night. Hallelujah. He said, but in the, in the opening uh, words of that verse, he says, for his anger, his anger, Endureth but a moment. 
His anger endureth only last for a moment, for a while. In his favor, in his desire, in his delight is life. Oh, somebody praise God. And then David says, weeping, the crying. Oh, hallelujah. Church being disabled can be referred to as dark periods, depressive moments, stressful times, unbearable, intolerable moments, which at times can be pitch black. Talk to me now. Darkness can be pitch black if there are no street lights. Hello? And if there's not even a candle lit, the darkness sometimes in the country, you can feel it. Uh-oh. It's my time now. I got all the time to preach now. In the country, it's pitch black. Sometimes you can feel it. And I grew up in Jamaica. And back then, when in the early 80s, not everywhere had electricity. Because it's a third world country, yeah? Not everywhere had electricity, so there were some light poles without street lights, and not every home had uh, electricity, so they had to use something that they call lamps with kerosene oil. Can I talk to you young people? Because, you see, we have to roll back the curtains of memories so we can have an appreciation for where we are going and where we have reached. Lamps, kerosene oil, and you light it and it burns. And sometimes when we go to school, because we have to sit around the lamps to do our homework and our assignments, we go to the bathroom, we don't even get to bathe so properly. When we go to school, inside our nostrils are black. I'm rolling back the curtains for some people to know that some of us didn't get here easy. Some of us didn't reach to this level that easily. We're coming from a mighty long way. I'm going to get a little evangelistic down here today. Hallelujah. Permit me to see a back of my bishopric and get into the evangelism realm a little bit. That's my whole being and purpose. And so, back then you had to use the lamps because it's dark and no electricity, no they didn't have any energy saving bulbs and, and, and you name this kind of thing. And no. <laughs> yes. Thomas Edison had already founded the light bulbs, but Jamaica didn't. <laughs> Parts of Jamaica didn't. Like some people, they weren't privileged. Some of us weren't privileged. To, some, to some, some stuff that would have made our lives happy. Amen. And so the darkness, when you go outside, the darkness would be pitched black. Like you can feel it and you walk in it. It's like it's heavy. Somebody praise the name of our Lord. So darkness can be a time pitch black. Not only pitched black, but desolate. Lonely. Scary. Ah, oh God, somebody help me here. But this I say to us all, that it doesn't matter how desolate, how lonely, how dark it becomes, it won't last. I'm going to preach down here to somebody. It doesn't matter how lonely, how, how stressful, how scary, how intolerable the situations of this life carries you into God says to tell you it won't last it won't last the night is a convenient period for the powers of darkness to operate oh you're kind of in a sophisticated kind of thing and up here in America, you know, there are some things that doesn't bother you. You're, you're not exposed to certain things. And there are certain things that doesn't come up against you. But you have some countries like down in some other countries. I won't even call their names. Come on, somebody. But they, but they are provoked by forces that operate through the dark world. To the dark world. You talk about the spirit realm. Come on, somebody. Some of you young people don't know about this. Come on, somebody. You, you have never been through this. I can, can I tell you? I tell 
many years ago when I started preaching, I went to parts of St. Elizabeth, in Silo, St. Elizabeth, under a tent with almost 600 people or more, preaching. And on the second night, do you know who they call sorcerer? They call them witchcraft workers. They call them obia workers. Yes, that man came up wrapped up in all kind of stuff with all kind of ugly looking things around him. And he stood at the pulpit and he said, you stop preaching now. You don't preach in the name of God anymore here. Didn't you get my letter earlier that you shouldn't come? Oh, you have never been to anything like this. Come on, somebody. And as a young pastor, ask me, what did I do? Come on, somebody. He stood and he leaned on the pole. And I stood under the anointing of God. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, lean off that church of God pole. Because you are standing on holy ground. Come on, somebody. You don't hear me. Ah, when I looked down in the crowd... Every, almost everybody was on the outside of the tent because this man had people's life in misery. He was turning the entire city upside down with all kind of voodoo, with all kind of obiaism, with all kind of witchcraft, with all kind of, you don't hear me talk to you somebody. And so he says, listen, the church is hampering, the church is disturbing my business. And he says, you are the leading one. And you got to go. I says, you come for me? He says, yes, stop preaching now. I say, you stop talking now. <laughs> and he says, who send you? I say, who send you? I know who send me. I know who I am. And I know whose I am. I don't know who you are. And I don't know whose you are. And I don't care to know who you are and whose you are. I know who I am. And I got to tell you, I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracle. I'm walking. I'm going to preach up in here tonight. Somebody help me preach down here today. I say, hey, I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracle. I live a life of favor. And I know. Oh, Oh, hello, young people. And so I said, Lean. And for the third time, he says, You got to go. Back then, a young preacher and Bishop Nelson can tell a young evangelist, We were crazy then. I'm kind of grown up now. And But a little bit of it is still left in me anyways. Because <laughs> evangelists like Luke and the others, you become crazy sometimes. And I walk down and he says, I'm going to kill you. I say, oh, really? You mean me? He says, yes, you. I says, all right, go ahead. But I give you 10 seconds to surrender to God or God is going to destroy you by the very utterances that proceeded out of my mouth in the name of God. Hallelujah. I picked up my Bible back then. You know, you want to look like a real preacher and evangelist. You carry a big Bible. So when you walked in church, man, you have a big Bible. But it's, it's pastor that. So I wanted to have that pastor look with a big Bible. I used to preach with tablets and then these small Bibles because I want a big Bible. And I picked up my big Bible. And I says, lean up in plain Jamaican term. Excuse me, please. <laughs> but I wasn't so decent. I wasn't so decent then. So I said, Ease of the church. Paul. He says, I am going to kill you tonight. You hear me? Yes. And I step down and I say, God, I come in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you tell me to do, I'll do it. I say, Jesus Christ or the devil. And I step down and I held up my Bible.
I say, if you can't take it spoken, take it hard. And I gave him one, and he went like this. And I said, what do you say? He says, I need you. I gave him two, and he went like this. I says, declare your position, who you are, whose you are. He says, I need you. And I went down, and I gave him the third, and he rocked back. What? And then he ran out of the tent. And he said, you, you, I give you nine days to live. I said, you, you, I give you three days to surrender our dead. There were some, un, some unsafe Rasta men and various persons on the outskirts of the tent. They said, Pastor, are you we want down here? You know how long this man giving us trouble? Everybody's afraid of this Obia man. Everybody's afraid. Everybody's life is in shambles. Hello? Ask me what happened. On the third day, everybody kept calling me, Pastor, they found this man dead in him house. They found him dead inside his house on his bed. No gunshot wound. Nobody trouble him. But if you trouble God, God will trouble you. I'm going to preach down here today. I said you trouble God and God's people. Expect God to trouble you. There are some people, I'm getting evangelistic now. There are some people who believe that they can provoke God's anointing. They can do you anything. They can throw sarcastic barbs and all kind of negativism at you, at your ministry, at your progress and expect that God is going to sit back and laugh and say oh oh no honey oh no God is going to show up and he's going to defend his people and he's going to protect his own he's going to set his hand over his people oh somebody shout hallelujah down here <laughs> darkness is a convenient environment for wickedness I said, darkness is a convenient environment for wickedness. And it is a period when weeping and grumbling takes place. For the most part, it is the darkness and its happenings that has rendered many disabled today, but not disqualified. God himself has ordained that night should endure, should not endure forever can I tell you something it doesn't matter where there are some parts in the world where you have three days of what night three three months night period but guess what the night is still not longer than the day hello but I said to a preacher the other day you know what I have just discovered that in parts of America, even when it reaches 8.30, you still have daylight. But when it reaches 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, look out, daybreak is coming. So that means you're saying to me what? If you check out the mats in Jamaica, they say do the mats. Do the mats. If you check out the mats, young people, that's Islam. Do the mats. Work out the mats. So when they work out the maths, you realize that nighttime has shortened. Because if nightfall comes at 8.45 or at 9, the darkness comes and daylight starts to come, on, come forth at 5 o'clock. That means the hours that darkness should have been 12 hours. Come on, somebody. But it has adjusted. So therefore, the possibility exists in the spiritual. Come on, somebody. That the darkness, God has the ability to shorten your moments of depression. To shorten your times of stress and worries. I don't know who I have traveled to talk to this morning. But I don't know what you're going through. But there's a third person of the Godhead that is saying to me today that you're just going through some stuff. You cannot fathom. 
you cannot understand you cannot comprehend uh, come on somebody you cannot work out when you check it through you cannot determine determine where it came from what is its purpose where is it gonna take you but one thing you know that your faith looks up to thee the Lamb of Calvary Savior divine now hear me while I plead take all my guilt away somebody shout something in Christendom hallelujah 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 darkness is a convenient environment for wickedness and it is a period when weeping and grumbling takes place but church whatever your situation might be today there is no signal from heaven that it will go on forever oh god almighty somebody say pastor i can't see that signal get spiritual get anointed and you will see the signal oh god almighty there's a signal from heaven saying to somebody in this house your moments of depression stress confusion problems in marriage in relationship at the workplace oh with the with, with the landlord with the tenants oh god almighty won't last oh preaching oh god almighty somebody help me here whatever you're going through the ridicule the embarrassments the disgrace the failures upon failures series of failures chains of failures oh somebody help me preach down here ah there's no signal from heaven that it's gonna stay with you any longer I come to tell you today on the 19th day of August 2018 whatever time on the clock it is the Holy Ghost says to tell you that you're coming out one way or another you're coming out of that condition you're coming out of that situation sit upon the Holy Ghost of fire let me miss Minister in this house today, I come to tell you, young people, it's not over until it's over. It's not done until God says it's done. My God, somebody help me preach up in here. I got somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sit upon me, cloud of fire. Sit upon me, Holy Ghost fire. Let me minister in this place today. Somebody shout yes. Oh God, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. It won't last. It won't go one minute further. It won't go one day further. It's done. It's done. Oh, excuse me, removing my coat, but it's done. Tell your neighbor it's done. It's done. It's over. It's over. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. You better let me loose down here. It's done. Woo! It's done. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Oh, shout hallelujah. It's all right to shout hallelujah. It's the highest praise on mortal tongue. It's the highest praise that angels ever sang. Hallelujah in English. Hallelujah in Spanish. Hallelujah in Chinese. Hallelujah in Japanese. Somebody in this house today. There's a hallelujah. My, 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 my. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah break chains. Hallelujah bill of bow.
Whoa. Sit down. Sit down. Oh, Bishop Nelson. You put me in a pulpit with pure anointing. I'm standing in an anointed pulpit. Anointing, anointing. My God, somebody help me down here. Oh, the fire of God is burning me in this pulpit. Somebody help me here. Somebody help me down here. Wow. 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 Wow, somebody. Yeah. Sit down if you can. Still a little bit more of my script. But the Holy Ghost seemed to want to mess up my script. The Holy Ghost want to mess up my script. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Rest your hand on your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am pleased to inform you that whatever you are going through that seems negative, stressful, depressing, confusing, God says to tell you, it's over. It's done. Sit down, let me get back to a few points in my script. Yeah, 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 yeah. Holy oh, Ghost just messing up my script. Come here. You, sir, yeah. No, uh, the, the gentleman behind you. Mm -hmm. Your shackles are broken And you are delivered Your shackles are broken God to tell you You are set free Mama, mama Is this a Holy Ghost? And clap in church of God. He says to tell you your shackles are broken. Yeah. 
and you are delivered. Your shackles are broken. You are set free. Whatever they are, God, you said it's broken. And he's free. We send him forth in that freedom in Jesus' name. Clap your hands, everybody. Mm. <laughs> uh, your shackles, they are broken. And you are delivered. Your shackles, they are broken. You are set free. All of you. All of you. Amen. Real Pentecostal preacher, sit down again. church so we look at the darkness when the forces of the enemy and the assignments of Satan they seem to be more effective Satan seeks to carry out his works during the dark period because he's called the angel of darkness but when the angel of light steps in then the light does what comprehend come on talk, talk to me no man talk to me so it doesn't when you look at a pitch black darkness bishop and you get one candle lit and stuck it all away in the darkness it doesn't matter at what distance you are you're still gonna see that little candlelight burning somewhere in the darkness. I want to tell somebody today, you're going through that dark period. But guess what? You're like the light. So the darkness cannot consume you. You still have an effect even in the darkness. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you somebody? Even in your dark period you still have words that are positive you still have a positive mindset you still maintain a positive outlook you still dress good I'm gonna preach down here so despite the dark period the stressing moments when the same income has to do to supply or serve or service higher bills and demands. That's a dark period. Same income, no increase. More bills, greater demands. But the income seem to be small. What do you do? You still maintain a positive look. Because you're a child of God. Oh, somebody help me here. So, so, so I still maintain a positive outlook. Because there are some people who are expecting your faces to be disfigured. Because there are some people who know about what you're going through. And so therefore they are looking for you to react. You don't like when I preach down here. So they are looking for you to react. According to what you're going through or in line with what you're going through. But because you serve a God. One that is always victorious. One that is always watching over us. I still can buy a new Kenneth Cole suit. Still can wear a nice Dulce and Gabbana. Still can put on a nice Tommy Hilfiger jacket suit that costs much. Still can wear a new shoe. Still 
can go to the barber. You still can go to your hairstylist. You still can go to your masseuse and your, the one who takes care of your facial look. And you're operating off little. But guess what? You know why your little has been stretching so? It's because little is much. When God is in it. Can I tell somebody the little that I have? You know why I can bask and brag in God like that? Is because God is in the little. Uh -oh. So the morning represents joy. Let the church say joy. Joy. Weeping may endure. It may go on, but as I get ready to move on over to joy, you must understand what, what may suggest there. Not necessarily that your weeping is going to go all through the night. That's what may. At the first hour of the night, your weeping could disappear. That's what the may is. At the sixth hour, of your night period, your weeping can go. So, uh, weeping may endure for a night. But look at joy, no? There's no conjunction. There's no may. There's no perhaps when it comes on to joy. Look at the positive. The concretized statement. The firm statement that has been made by David. It's a um, joy comes. It's not an if. When morning shows up, it's time for joy. I'm preaching down here, somebody. Church, when morning shows up, it's time for joy. And don't you ever think for one moment that David has misused the word joy when he should have used happiness. He was intentional. He was deliberate. Because he knows what he's talking about. Because watch this. Look at David. David comes up to Psalm 51. After he had sex with Bathsheba. And when he tried to shout. Shout was there. But there was no joy. He had the happiness in serving God, but the joy was missing. And the joy, if you have lost your joy in serving God, then something is wrong. The time has come for you to get back to the altar. It doesn't mean this altar, but wherever you have used or you can make into an altar, get back to that place. And like David said, Lord, restore unto me the joy. Of thy salvation. That means David did not say give to me the joy. Restore means to bring it back. That means he once had it. But he lost it. Hello. Are you still there? So morning represents joy and not happiness. Happiness is what the wears on the face. No, 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 no. And you're happy. But not everybody who seems to be happy have joy. Talk to me. Not everybody who comes to church, they just wear that smile for you not to really bother them by asking what are you going through because you're not wearing the usual face. And then you have some people who listen because they were created that way. They were created that way and we're in a happy face. See, it doesn't easily detect when they are going through phases. Because they wear that happy face. But the morning represents joy. And can I decree in this house. And prophesy over this august body of people. Into your life. That if any at all. The enemy has stolen your joy. Oh, help me here. It shall be restored to you today. Today. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree it. I declare it. 
I speak it. Not as some of those false prophets or hurry come up televangelists. But as a mouthpiece of God sent down here today. Holy Spirit of God. I declare what you have deposited into my spirit. Over every listener. That their joy must return. Today. Let the church say today. 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 Thank you, baby. And so we are the absence of your joy has rendered you impotent and helpless. I now declare reactivation and revitalization. Be thou reactivated, revitalized. Church, the enemy does not have the last say on your life. Oh, you don't hear me today. Young people, the enemy doesn't have the last say on your life. Yeah, there are some people who I lived around in Jamaica who said, listen, mama, grandma, his mother died. My mother died when I was three years old. And I said to my grandmother, give him away. He will never come to anything good. There I go again. And this was somebody who would have been very much holding a high office in the church that my grandmother attended. And she says, I don't see any hope. But guess what? I am glad that she says, I, meaning she, not God. There are some people who say they don't see any hope in you. But that's their view. Oh yeah, fine with you. I can live with that. But what I can't live with if God says there's no purpose, there's no hope in you. Come on, somebody. Uh, 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 hello, somebody. Are you still there with me? And so, I said, give him away. He's not going to come out to anything good. But guess what? My mama prayed. My mama prayed. One morning, she knelt at her bedside. And she said, Lord God, remember Steve. And something moved in me. Mama prayed. God remembered. And who I am today. Her prayers counteracted the naysayers. Get me down here today. We better learn how to pray. The utterances of some naysayers of our lives. We better know how to pray. And praise the negative utterances, perceptions, come on somebody, and declarations that they are placed on your life, of your life. Naysayers, naysayers, I reached a phase in primary school when they says, listen, the examination for you to move from primary school to go to high school, you won't be able to pass that exam because you're, it, it requires so much. And I think you don't have the ability. You see, there are some people who like to put down others. You better let me loose in this place a little bit. Hello? There are some people who like to put down others. Hello? And guess what? I told my grandmother... And again, she says, Lord, God, remember Steve. I went back to evening classes. And the teacher says, you're back. I looked at her and says, Lord, God, remember Steve. The teacher look and say, I better leave you alone. Ah, uh, somebody. There's something when the righteous mentions the name of God. Something happens. The underworld gets disturbed. The principalities of darkness are disturbed. Talk to me down here. Uh, the witch and the wizards and the warlock and the princes of Persia and the witch of Endor, their activity.
is, are disturbed. And I sat that exam. And can I tell you? 1994, check the records. Former Prime Minister, Honorable Percival James Noel Pattison, P.J. Pattison. And former Governor General of Jamaica, Sir Howard Cook. I sat with them at meal at Devon House. Because after the exam and the results came out, in July, I was the top student in Jamaica. Disabled, but I'm not disqualified. I'm still qualified. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm still qualified. It's only a limitation. It's only a delay. It's only some form of deficiency. God has the ability to fix deficiency. God has the ability to turn inability into ability. Oh, come on somebody. Can I talk to you? God has the ability to move limitations and allow it to become borders beyond. You're not talking to me down here? And I was awarded scholarship. Just like that. Look at your neighbor and say, just like that. I don't know how long you're going to take to invite me back. But I hope that when I come back, this that I'm about to release over you, there's some scholarship locked up for many of you. And I open, I open the drawer the filing cabinets, the offices. Ah, come on, somebody. I, I call the committee together. Consider your name. Consider me, Lord. Oh, somebody help me. Young people, I release it over you. Walk into college. You don't know where the next semester fee is coming from. You don't know how you're going to make it through. But God says, I have great and greatness locked up, stored away for the righteous. Lift your hand, young people, and say, it's mine. I receive it. I did not apply for it. But God have the ability to allow applications that weren't tendered or haven't yet tendered to be seen. Ask me how God do it. Come on, somebody, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, God can do it. Nobody has the last say on your life. Nobody. Nobody. I say, nobody. Nobody. My God Almighty, nobody has the last say on your life. It doesn't matter who, whether your mama or your papa, whether your stepmama or your stepfather, whether your bigger brother or your bigger sister. Whether your favorite TV star or your American idol. Nobody has the last say. God has the last say. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, look at me good. I might not look as good as you, but if you weren't here, I would have been the best looking one here today. Come on, somebody talk to me. But well, look at me, neighbor. Say, look at me, neighbor. Look at me. You doesn't have the last say over my life. God has the last say where I go, what I become, what level I reach. So you better ease off. You better back off. You better excuse me for I'm coming up. I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain. And I'm doing my best. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, no condition is permanent. No condition. Your doctor, 
the physician, the consultant, the one who was in the, 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 the ultrasound department, the one who sits around the computer with your x-ray result. Talk to me here. Uh, hello, are you still here? Your gynecologist. You name all the East. They don't have the last say over your life. The one who have just read the result to you a past couple of days now that you have a serious pancreatic cancer. That you've been diagnosed with leukemia. That you've been diagnosed with the stone in the blood. That you've been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Talk to me somebody. That you've been diagnosed with some terminal illnesses. Can I tell you something? They can only look at the machine, tell you that. But if God says I'm going to get you out of it. Nobody can keep you in it. They will give you the medications and you're going to take the medications because we're a people of faith and intellect because we cannot just have the faith and no works. You have the faith and the works is to go to the doctor. The doctor prescribed the medication. You go to the pharmacist. The pharmacist supply you with it and you follow through with the instructions and that's the work. There's a God called the Almighty, the greatest one. His power is the greatest. God is the only one that has the last say concerning any one of us lives. Once God says, let there be light, it is finished. There is light. There will surely be light. Once he also says, you are free. You are free. As someone who serves in the security and justice system in Jamaica, when he goes to the court, you take a suspect or an accused before the judge, especially at the time of sentence after he or she would have pleaded guilty, or if they didn't pleaded guilty, they would have went through the process of trial, and the judge and juror, if there's a juror, depending on the charge, if you're found guilty, then the judge would give you some days and then he, he or she would have gone to his or her chamber, look through the laws, the amount of sentencing, sum up everything, and guess what? It would give you a return date as to when to come back for sentencing. When you go back for sentencing, the judge would ask the police, did you get his criminal records? Meaning that had you applied at the fingerprint department to show if he or she has committed any crimes and was sentenced, so he or she, the judge can know what amount of sentence to apply upon the individual. And then you would ask the probation officer to do a social inquiry meaning go into the community, check with people, family, and outsiders as it relates to the conduct, the modus operandi of the individual, his associates, and all of that, and put a report together. And the judge would look through all of that, and then he, he or she would give the sentence. And sometimes, based upon what is founded and what is read, the judge would say, you are sentenced to one year imprisonment at hard labor on one count, and then you're sentenced to three years in prison at hard labor. Yes? And then if it's two offenses, it says to run concurrently or to run consecutively. Meaning that whilst he served one, the other one would, whatever time frame, or he would have to serve two years, then go back to serve another one year. So that's the man-made court, and the judge would sentence the man. And when he's sentenced, then the police now would have to have extra security in court or outside of the court because this man now will not go back to society. He's going into what? A confined space where his movements are further restricted and limited. Are you talking to me? 
And so the security will have to ensure that they bangle him. And cuff him firmly. And have a firm grip on this man. Because if he runs, the police better run behind him or run ahead of him and say, come, my job is gone. Come. You hear me? And so, there the man says, all right, the judge makes the decision. The final say. And he's sentenced. Man cannot sentence you unless God ordain it to be so. Are you there with me? It doesn't matter what they perceive. It doesn't matter what they were told. Hello somebody. Because that's what your past is your past. Because what the judge would have done is to dig up the man's past. I don't want to bring it back in order to know how to say. But God says, listen man, when I write off your past, oh Jesus help me here. If God had not written up some of us past, some of us who call ourselves pastors and leaders would not be standing here. So before we are quick to sentence anybody, check on where we are coming from and what God has written up for us that we can stand here. Hello? Young people, I had messed up. Badly. 17 years old, I got saved. But I messed up. But guess what? I didn't stay down there. For a couple of months, I picked up myself. Hello, somebody. And for 20 odd years now, I am pressing on the upward way. Young people, you're going to have challenges. You're going to have setbacks. You're going to have people who tell you you cannot make it. And, and it makes no sense. You try. And there, there are people who are going to beat down on you. Breathe on you. That's right, that's right. With all kind of utterances. But guess what? You have to develop a positive mindset. That listen, it doesn't matter what people say. I am determined to go forward. Come on, somebody. Put your vision, and I like what Habakkuk 2, verse 2 says. Write the vision. Write it down. Make it plain. Yes, write it up on tables. That's what the King James Version says. But another version says, write it up on tablets, meaning stones back there. But you see how far tablet coming from? So excuse me when you see me using my tablet. Tablet is coming from Bible. So let, I wrote down my, 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 my points on tablet. And I, I am delivering it to you. Because Bible says you must write it on tablet. Hello. Their tablets then were stones. My tablet. Now say so you see how far gadgets are coming. Excuse me please. Let's get. Yeah. <laughs> write your vision on tablet. And let those who read it run. Yeah. Run with it. When you write your vision and it is clear, and people who's new and people can see rather where you want to go, yeah. then guess what? When they, when, when they see it, when they look through it, then guess what? They're going to run with you. They're going to run and share it. They're going to run and say, listen, we can do it. Let's go. Look at your neighbor and say, we can do it. Together we're going to do it. Oh, God Almighty. Bishop. You have a vision. East Flatbush, leaders, directors, board of management, committees, and trustees, you have a vision. And I don't know, not because I shared it or I expressed, oh God, I might, and Bishop would have expressed it to me, but I sense in my spirit right now that the vision carries. Oh, hallelujah. The vision carries. Oh, hallelujah. The vision that you have, good God Almighty, for whatever structure, whatever you want to set up in the city, I declare that no roadblock, no hindrances, no dismissal, no stoppage. Oh, somebody help me. Let me clear the path. Oh, God Almighty. No withholding of documents. Oh, God Almighty. Oh, God Almighty. No state office I can block. 
can hinder, can stop the progress. In the name of Jesus Christ, the vision of your servant, our God, I'm at the church of God, must carry us. Our God, I'm at every blockage, oh God, every setup, every mode that is set against the vision of the church, we nullify it, we bring it down. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, we bring it into submission. I feel that I'm fighting some battles. Shila bobo boko sanda da baketoria ba, mari ketoria si la bohu, tia ba kendoria sakria. Shila ba 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 kosanda, labre kamusa kita, sendi ketoria ba handai, lado ketasa, sede katandi yokumu, shido kosiri ya handai, lado ketoria ba he, taroba kasido, shida kasata baba, kosake taka hu. Ente kasidi ukosindia, libra kama hudi ya kesanda, da soko umri kinti, si mai katuria, lensan kantara, da soko nori, di mai kriniro, siliba shanda kritoria, bado koshida bahandia, Holy Spirit of God, forward, advance. Advance. That's what the Holy Ghost have just told me to tell you, church. Advance. Advance. The Holy Ghost have just brought back a scripture to tell me. It says, Express to the bishop of this house and the leaders and those who are engaged into this building process and into, the, into this advancement process of the kingdom of God, of the tabernacle. That listen, God says to tell you, you're at Horeb. You are now at Horeb. But he says, get ready. I didn't promise you Horeb. I promise you the land of Canaan. Go back and read Deuteronomy. God says, get up children of Israel. He said, my servant, command the people to move from Horeb. I know they are comfortable at Horeb. I know church you are comfortable. But God says this is not what I promised you. I promise you the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan. Canaan is a masculine name. And it, is a, it was a grandson of, of, of Noah who was named Canaan. Uh, that was Ham's son that was named Canaan. But we are not talking about the masculine or, it, uh, uh, or Noah's grandson. But I'm talking about the land of Canaan which means plenty. Which means abundance. Which means a place of overflow. God says I am getting ready to take you from Horeb. Horeb is the mountain where anybody want to be on the mountain. Come on somebody. But I'm taking you into the place where the Perizzites, the Hittites, the, the Jebusites, the Gargashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites and all these ites live. And listen, they are built structures. They are planted all kind of crops and guess what? They are ready for harvesting. But God says I will not allow them to harvest it. But I'm going to send you in and you shall be the harvesters of what the enemy has sown. Can I tell you something the wealth of the rich man is stored up for the righteous I'm prophesying over this house can I tell somebody never get discouraged don't worry the wealth 